Welcome back to Play in the Shed Day. Well, today we're not doing any metalwork. We're back to doing some woodwork. And because it's getting close to Christmas, I'm going to make this tractor and trailer. These little projects are great for using up old pieces of scrap. So I sort through the scrap under my bench and find some bits that might be useful to make this tractor and trailer. This lump of wood is an old piece of pergola post. And I find it's made from cypress pine, which is nice timber to work with and it smells really good. This old project could just be made up as you go along, but because I can, I made some drawings. This helps me get the proportions reasonably right. Anyway, because of none of my pieces of scrap are the right size, I've got to end up cutting out the pieces that I need from these large blocks. I want to cut a sliver off the side of this block, but because it's so short and there's a gap in the saw there, it's a bit wobbly. So the easiest way to do that is just to put another piece of wood behind it and everything's good, nice and solid. And now I can cut that without the piece of wood moving and possibly tearing my hand in the process. I'm not brave enough to use the drop saw for this angle cut, so I'll just use the band saw for this. Okay, there's the main cabin shape bit done. But there's always a bit of sanding to happen because the, the bandsaw doesn't cut particularly smoothly. Yes, I know trucks don't have round windows, but I'm going to use a force in a bit to make the window. It's just a bit of a different shape and adds a bit of interest. I'm going to use a router to um, make the window. Of course you could just use a chisel and a hammer, but that's manual labour and I don't like that sort of thing. That's the cab done, and now it's time for the body. Again, you could just do this freehand, but because I could, I drew it. And so I'm drawing out the shape on a piece of wood. Again, not the right size piece of wood, of course. It's too thick and too big, so I'll have to cut out the shape and then make it a bit narrow as well. But that's the joys of using scrap. But one of the benefits of using scrap is that you can use different sorts of timber for different bits. It adds a lot more interest to the end product rather than just using the same colour and type of timber. Thank you. 
The sand is not only good for smoothing out, but it's good for putting profiles on the pieces of timber as well. So I've just put slight chamfers on this. Time for the chassis. This is just going to be a piece of 19mm pine. I've got a slice of decking board, which has got a nice pattern in it that looks very radiator-like, so I'll use a bit of that. That'll be perfect. A wooden button will be perfect for the radiator cap. Now, it doesn't matter whether you can use uh, reed calipers or not, they're really useful. I'm just going to measure the width of that button and then just using the caliper I keep checking until I find the right size drill. Perfect and easy to get the right size hole. And I'm just using a bit of super glue to glue the little button in. Observant viewers will notice that I'm using a bit of custom um, first aid, some electrical tape and some chucks cloth make a perfect band-aid. Projects like this are really quite simple. You just take it one little step at a time and now I can glue the bits to the chassis. Again, I'm using um, wood glue um, as the, the strength material, but I'm going to be putting some dobs of super glue on as well because the super glue sticks immediately, and so I can keep working without the thing falling apart. And eventually, the wood glue will dry and it'll be nice and strong. Because the back wheel is bigger than the front wheel, the axle positions are in different spots. So again, I've just got them drawn out, just to make it easy to mark where the axles go. Right, the axle holes are drilled out, a little bit of clearance so the axles spin freely. So now it's time to do the wheels. I'm just using a bit of spray adhesive this time to glue the drawing of the wheels onto the timber. This can easily be removed later with a bit of mineral turps. If you're wondering about my injury, I wasn't holding the piece of wood tight enough when I was sanding it and the sander grabbed it and whacked me on the thumb. Not a serious injury. And I'll probably live. I'm going to use a force and a bit to drill the inside of the wheel, but if I just drill it with the force and a bit, sometimes the force and a bit can rip the paper and therefore ruin your pattern. So I'm just going to run around with a craft knife so that when the force and a bit drills that hole, it will pick up that piece of paper and it won't rip the rest of it. Okay, there they are drilled. 
time to cut them out and I'm just going to rough cut them on the bandsaw just leaving a little bit of the line. I find it impossible to cut a perfect circle so I just leave a little bit of the line and then I sand the line on the sander. This not only produces a nice round wheel but it's nice and smooth as well. I'm using a Dremel with a metal cutting disc to basically just cut a pattern into the wheels that look like tread. This tractor uses double wheels so there'll be eight wheels all together. Two big ones at the back and two smaller ones at the front. Another piece of that off-cut decking timber will do for the roof I reckon. The front bumper is next and again I've got a bit of scrap here, it's too thick but I've drawn the, the major pattern, cut that out on the bandsaw and then just slice a bit off it to make it the perfect width. A bandsaw is such a versatile tool for the shed and I use it both for woodwork and metalwork because it cuts aluminium just as well as it cuts timber. The tractor's taking shape, but I want to make some mud guards. So again, I've drawn the shape, so that all the mud guards are all the same looking. So it's just a simple matter of cutting them out on the bandsaw as well, giving them a bit of a sand, and they'll, they'll be finished. Now I can't sand the inside with my sanding disc. This little finger sander is really useful for this sort of thing. Again, using the super glue as well as the wood glue is really useful, particularly in this sort of situation, because I only have to hold the mud guard in position for a few seconds and it stays there. I want this tractor to just have a natural timber look but I wanted to have a bit of a finish on it to bring out the colour of the timber and I'm, so I'm just using um, a bit of golden shellac. Um, this is just um, pure shellac flakes with methylated spirits and it dries really quickly. It dries hard so when it's dried I'll finish it off just with a bit of steel wool to smooth everything off. You can see how the golden shellac adds a rich colour to all of the timber. Okay, there's the tractor finished. Looks pretty good, very solid. Should last a lifetime. And I decided to make a trailer to go with it. And here's the finished product. The tractor and the trailer. The trailer has a peg to connect it to the tractor. And the trailer has a load of lumber. This sort of project is easy to do, takes very little skill and only uses scrap. 
but the end result is very satisfying. This type of wooden toy can be enjoyed by multiple generations. Go and make one yourself.